audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. Money is a good thing, isn't it? Or is it? I wonder how well have you planned your finances, your day-to-day budgeting, your, your savings, your retirement savings? Because as things turn out, money is a great servant, but a terrible master. Bernie Diamond and welcome to the program today as we welcome Alex Cook from Wealth with a Purpose to the program to chat about your money and your finances, I guess from a bit of a a different perspective. Alex, great to have you on the program. Thanks for having me, Bernie. Great to be here. Hey, tell us a bit about what you're doing these days. Yeah, well, I used to be a financial planner, so I had for many years, I've been giving uh, advice to people, both originally as a stockbroker and then as a financial planner. Uh, But then I decided and really God put on my heart to see how I could help people to really become great stewards with the financial resources that God's blessed us with. Now, some of us are blessed with a little, some of us are blessed with a lot. It doesn't really matter. But either way, we're called to uh, use that money that God has given us to honour Him and to glorify Him. So I created Wealth with Purpose on the idea of teaching Christians um, both the biblical principles, which uh, often surprises people to find out just how many principles there are about money in the Bible, uh, and then to actually give it practical application. In other words, how do you actually take the Bible and apply it to your day-to-day life and day-to-day financial management? Oh, you're on the right program then. We've we've got the right guy. That's good. Um, Now, in this whole game of being a financial advisor, I guess you, you counseled lots of people and lots of couples over the years. Absolutely. Um, I mean, I've probably spoken to thousands of people now, I suspect, but in terms of our actual business, we had, you know, a couple of hundred clients in terms of, you know, helping them with insurance and retirement planning, investments and, and all that sort of thing. Uh, I mean, the book Rich Dad, Poor Dad, I think, made, made this yep. whole thing quite famous. But over those years of, of helping people with their finances, what are some of the big mistakes that you saw people make? I, I guess there are common ones that happen over and over and over again. Probably the most common one, I think, uh, in today's day and age is lack of savings. You know, a lot of people, young people particularly, complain. They say, well, you know, it's really hard to save money. And I think that comes from our society now so consumption-based that we've really gotten away from being a savings culture. In fact, back in the 1970s, we used to save 16% of our income. Uh, Just prior to the famous global financial crisis, it got down to minus 3% in that decade leading up to the crisis. So that means we were spending 3% more than we were actually earning. Exactly. And of course, racking up debt. And that's not just at an individual level, it's of course at a government level as well. Well, you see that with governments right around the globe, right? They're spending more than, than they're actually getting in tax. It's mind-boggling, and it's quite frightening. I think um, the sort of response to the global financial crisis has simply been uh, governments feel a need to stop any yeah, you know downside in their economy. They feel under pressure in order to keep getting re-elected, and, uh, and the, as a result, running massive deficits. So I think it's an interesting idea biblically because we're told that we should be generous. We're told that we should be giving away sacrificially. Um, there's the concept of the tithe from the Old Testament. And Jesus says, don't store up for yourself mm. treasures on this earth. So how do you how do you kind of reconcile this, this whole savings thing with what the Bible says? Yeah, look, so I think there's a few ways of answering that. Firstly, I'd make a distinction here between saving versus hoarding. Hoarding, I think, would be an unbiblical activity. Hoarding is really saving money, if you like, but for something that's it's never, ever going to get used. It's just putting money away, often out of fear, you know, fear that one day you may run out, whereas saving is actually about putting money aside for sensible things in the future. So, for example, many of us you know, need to fund our children's education. Even though I actually personally don't believe in retirement in the sort of conventional sense... Well, we're going to talk about that later in the series. Yeah, well, um, I certainly think you still need to plan for it to the extent that at some point in time you may either be physically unable to work or you mm-hmm. get made redundant and so forth. So you still need to have money set aside to allow for the fact that your circumstances change as you age. Yeah. So in that sense, saving is quite biblical. And in fact, in Proverbs 6, it talks about... The the ant. That's the the analogy it uses. And it talks about the fact that the ant stores away um, for the future. Yeah. And we need to do the same. But as I say, it's a balance between saving and actually being generous at the same time. In fact, if a really good analogy I use, when I talk about budgeting, I give people a very simple rule. It's called the 80-10-10 rule. So 80% should be for your uh, day-to-day living expenses. 10% is what I call giving to God. And really, that's a starting point, not a finishing point. Yeah. And everyone's circumstances differ, but that's at the starting. And then 10% for long-term saving. So, it's a really simple model. 80% for living, uh, 10% for giving, and 10% for long-term saving. Now, over time, as your circumstances change, hopefully, you can increase the giving 
And of course, hopefully you can increase the saving as well, depending on what your circumstances are and and the purpose for which you think God is wanting you to use that money for. Young people in particular, often if buying their own home or their own apartment is beyond them, young people often don't think too much about saving, do they? They don't. I think our culture now is so... um, as I say, it's so consumer-based, we're attacked almost daily by advertising. And so there's a real sense of discontentment and a real sense of needing to keep up with the Joneses. The latest that phone, right? The, the, the latest, latest bit of technology. Oh, it's it's amazing. Oh, now it's watches, you know. <laughs> you now got these... <laughs> I'm, I'm, wearing, I'm wearing one. <laughs> the Apple, <laughs> Apple Watch, there you go. So it's. Um, I think people feel under enormous pressure from society to conform in a particular way. And as Christians, you know, we really conform to, uh, you know, the gospel and to actually try and use what we have to glorify God. So it's a very different way of thinking. Um, and it's, it's not necessarily easy because, as I say, every day you're getting mixed messages from the world. I mean, I can't even walk down the dairy aisle in the supermarket without looking at the floor and seeing advertising messages being thrown at me. I mean, it's happening all... The, the statistics about how many advertising messages we're, we're hit with a day are outrageous. Yeah, and I think... You know, even when you look at the people standing at a bus stop, half of them are these days are on Facebook, and Facebook is just now giving them tons and tons of advertising. advertising yeah. That's a problem that's not going to go away. But I think the, the issue there for, for people is to actually step back from it and actually really think about what you're doing with your money. Actually plan it. So rather than having a sort of spur of the moment sort of uh, view of money and just going from one thing to the next, actually sit down and plan it out. Do a budget. Actually see where your money's going. So that's probably the awareness. next. That's probably the next biggest mistake, right? People aren't saving enough, but they, they're not deliberate about how they manage their money. Yeah, and I think most people aren't even aware of it. They're not actually aware of where their money's actually going. You know, it feels like they've got holes in their pockets, Mm. so to speak. And so unless we become aware of it as the first step and then actually putting what I call, if you like, very simple strategies into place to actually manage it. So one, for example, is I try and tell people to, apart from doing a budget, which will get you aware, is actually to try and automate your finances. So for example, some people get paid weekly, others fortnightly, some monthly. But make it so that when that money comes in your account, um, set up an automatic sort of feature whereby the money sweeps out into a savings account yeah. or into your giving to God account. Um, and I also say to people that they need to have an emergency fund. That's one yeah. thing. So many people end up with credit card debt because they find themselves in an emergency. They find themselves made redundant or a medical expense or something happens and they haven't got the money there to, to help them. Yeah. And so setting that money aside is, is very important. But all of this requires planning. But the good news though for, for listeners particularly is money is actually quite simple. You only have to do very simple things, put the building blocks in place, the foundations, if you like, and uh, away you go. All right, we're going to talk about that over the next couple of weeks on the program, Alex. Some good insights there. I guess when I was young, it was easy to be deliberate because there were no credit cards, there were no overdrafts. I mean, when you ran out at the end of the pay period, you ran out at the end of the pay period. So it was a lot easier to plan, whereas now I can just wave my watch in front of a terminal and spend money willy-nilly. And the choice now is mind-boggling. Yeah. By the way, you run an organisation called Wealth with a Purpose, right? That's right. Tell us very quickly about that. Yeah, Wealth with Purpose was set up really, I describe it as a a stewardship ministry, but really all we're trying to do is teach Christians what the Bible says about money, which is an enormous amount, and then put that together with practical application. Is there a web address people can check out? Yeah, it's wealthwithpurpose.com. Wealthwithpurpose.com. Worthwhile going to have a look, mate. We're almost out of time. We'll catch up again tomorrow and have another talk about how we can effectively manage our money in a godly way. Fantastic. Look forward to it. the power to transform your life, to help you become all that God made you to be. And that's what the Fresh Daily Devotional is all about. It's completely free and I'd love to send it to you. Each day you'll receive a life-changing scripture together with some words of inspiration, hope and encouragement delivered right to your inbox where you can choose to read it, listen to the message or watch the daily video. It's completely up to you. Remember, God's Word is the power to change. It's fresh for you each day. You can subscribe to receive your free daily devotional at freshdevotional.org or give us a call toll-free on 1300 722 415 to request the printed devotional if that works better for you. Again, that's freshdevotional.org or 1300 722 
415. My prayer is that your heart will be touched and transformed as you draw ever closer to Jesus through the power of his word. I'm Bernie Diamond, and I'll catch you again same time tomorrow with a different perspective. Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au. 